Hello everyone. If you are looking for a project to decorate your workspace, garden, or audio system, don't miss this video. In this video, I will share with you a volume meter circuit using RGB LEDs, where you can customize the LED colors and effects as you wish. Furthermore, this project is very simple and requires few components, so even someone new to electronics can easily build it. Thank you to JLCPCB for sponsoring this project. I have shared the complete project and you can download the files below the description of this video and order on JLCPCB's website. The ordering and payment process is very simple and fast. The PCB production time takes about two days. In addition, if you don't have the components, you can order PCBA. JLCPCB has a vast inventory of components and can meet any of your component needs. This is the soldering path of the chip. How would you route it? If the number of pins is low, you can route traces directly outwards. However, when there are many solder pads on the chip, it becomes difficult to do the fan out. So we drill vias to transfer the traces to other layers. Note that we first extend a trace from the pad before drilling the via. While routing becomes much simpler, you still need to route at least one trace from pad to via. So there can still be issues with pads being too dense or too numerous to route effectively. If we directly place the via directly on the pad, there's no need for additional trace before via. But this can lead to solder wicking away through the hole during soldering, causing defects or cold solder joints. Via in pad technology addresses these issues. We still place the via on the pad, but then fill it with resin and plate it with copper. The surface shows almost no trace of this. And soldering is as reliable as with a regular pad, saving on routing, optimizing board size, and also enhancing thermal conduction. If you're looking to optimize your routing and save time, you can take advantage of free via in pad service. Try it now and save time. After waiting for about a week, you will receive your PCB. And as always, the quality of the PCB is excellent. This project uses very few external components, just a few resistors and capacitors. You can easily buy them at any electronics store. The most expensive part is an Arduino nano board, which costs $2 in my area. If you frequently use SMD components, I recommend buying this storage box. It's very convenient as you can easily open the lid and take out the components from the box. To solder SMD components, you can use solder paste and a hot air rework station. However, this circuit only has a few components and you can use a soldering iron to solder them. It doesn't take too much time. We also need a few capacitors and a potentiometer. The capacitors are placed close to the connection port for the LEDs. The LEDs operate at 5 volts and when the LED strip is in operation, the current consumption fluctuates. The capacitors will address this issue. Here is the circuit after soldering all the components. We will need an Arduino Nano as well. Here, I'm using a clone Arduino from China. It's very cheap, costing only about $2. You can use either an official Arduino Nano or a clone. Both work well. We also need an additional switch and two push buttons. The switch is used to toggle the peak hold function. The two push buttons are for switching modes and changing colors. The three pin jack is used to input audio signals into the circuit.
First, we need to upload the program to the Arduino Uno. This process is very simple, and I'm sure you all know how to do it. It only takes a few seconds, and if an error occurs, it indicates that you are missing the necessary libraries. Please add all the required libraries and try again. Here are two WS2812B LED strips. I'm using a one meter strip with 144 LEDs. You can also use longer strips if you want. Everything can be configured in the program. This LED strip has three wires, a five volt power wire, a GND wire, and a control signal wire. Just plug it into the connection jack on the control board and the circuit is ready to work. During the first connection, you can see all the LEDs will light up, allowing you to check for any faulty LEDs. Next, use a screwdriver to adjust the brightness of the LED strip as well as the sensitivity of the input signal. When adjusting the sensitivity, turn the screwdriver so that the LEDs turn off completely when there is no audio signal at the input. Connect the audio signal to the circuit. And if everything goes smoothly, you will see the LEDs flashing to the beat of the music. You can also press the button to change the colors of the LED strip. There are many colors to choose from. Additionally, you can press the button to change the flashing mode of the entire LED strip.